There is only one thing on this earth more powerful than evil, and that's us. Hi guys, this is Charisma Carpenter from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, your favorite bitch on wheels. You're listening to Buffy Back Issue Bin. Welcome to the Buffy Back Issue Bin, the show where we go through all the Buffy and Firefly comics. What about Angel? He doesn't have a book yet. Poor Angel. Hey, welcome back. We've been gone for a month. If you're just a regular podcast subscriber, if you're a Patreon subscriber, we've been gone for a week. Has it really been a month? Yeah, since our last Buffy one, yeah. Wow, that was a long one. If you're new, what we have done before is we went through every single Buffy and Angel comic that was canon chronologically in the old Dark Horse and IDW canon. But now since that's done, we're moving on. On to the new stuff. Normally, what we're going to be doing is going to be doing non-spoiler and spoiler issue reviews. Those are going to be Patreon exclusives. But for this first one, and possibly for the first issue of ARCs, I haven't decided yet, we're going to be putting them out for free to entice you to wet the whistle. So you can see what we sound like. Also, what's your name? Oh, I'm Zach. And I'm Emily. Hey, hey, what's up? Good job introducing yourself. Whatever. And if I sound a little congested today, it's her fault. I was congested this week. You got me sick. Yes. The children got me sick. We're snowed in today, and I had a choice, Sudafed or have mimosas, and here we are. We have like <laughs> 18 inches of snow forecast, 18 to 24 inches. It's a lot of snow. And a lot of mimosas. The mimosas are gone. No, yep. It's also the afternoon. <laughs> Still going. But it is a brand new world, so we're going to start off with Buffy the Vampire Slayer number one. A brand new world for Buffy, not for us. Yeah, I mean, same podcast studio, same marriage. What up? New snow. Pound it and explode. I like the snow. Not the marriage. <laughs> I mean, that's good too, but the snow. The snow is new. We can go snowshoeing with the podcast dog. Buffy the Vampire Slayer number one, written by Jordi Belair, illustrated by Dan Mora, and colors by Raul and Gulo, and letters by Ed Dukeshire. You're so great at names. <sighs> that is just a skill of <laughs> I yours. Know, I know, I'm real bad at it. I, I tried. You did try. I want to give everyone credit where credit is due. And we're really sorry if we mispronounce your name terribly. Probably did. Almost guaranteed. We're very sorry. But starting off with non-spoilers, right off the bat, this book charms me. What is the episode one title of Buffy the Vampire Slayer season one? Welcome to the Hellmouth. <laughs> first take. No one will ever know. But immediately charming because what is our first issue titled? Welcome back to the Hellmouth. But as a whole, just, you know, kind of putting it all up front, this issue is really solid. Also, just for people who don't know, this comic is current day. Yeah, this is a full reboot of Buffy. It starts off really strong. I think its main strength, what it does, is it gives a lot of familiar elements. Because there's going to be new stuff that gets introduced that is going to be different from the old show. But it gives enough familiar that makes it feel nostalgic while introducing enough new elements that kind of hook you a little bit. But this one doesn't give you too much new to kind of ease you in. Yeah, it's kind of like all of the good stuff of the high school years of Buffy during the TV show. Not the comic. You said that, I didn't. <laughs> Without kind of that jarring feeling that the creators are trying to do something that's crazy new and different. Yeah, the advantage of doing something like this versus trying to squeeze these into past episodes is it's a clean slate. They don't need to worry about continuity. They don't need to worry about trying to like, oh, where would this fit in between like episodes six and seven? It just clean slate works for what it is and it gives you enough old that makes you feel familiar like you don't get crazy new stuff and granted we don't know much about the crazy new stuff there's characters that we know are coming that haven't been introduced yet the most radical character redesign we've seen is robin wood he's not in this yet but i like that it just gives you kind of that core i also like that it pulls characters from later in the buffy tv series into the beginning so yeah. I don't know if this is a spoiler well, or a gonna, non-spoiler but i won't spoil the main there's one. some characters that get pulled in who don't show up until later seasons for sure i'll say anya's in this and okay that's what i was not gonna say but that's, I was gonna that's say cool the, i was gonna do a different one. Oh, there's another <laughs> one too but there's a couple characters and robin wood even you just mentioned robin wood that well, he shows up early or we're assuming he's his character be, design he's gonna be a teenager this yeah. time versus a principal yeah that it's not just not your principal is that how you learned how to spell it i don't know that's how they always taught us how to spell it cool i mean for the first time ever i think ani is the most interesting one there i always liked anya for whatever i don't know i just i her hook is more interesting this time than I think anyone else. Oh, she's else. very interesting this time around. Don't get me wrong. I just always liked Anya before, too. Most of the characters feel familiar. Willow, they've kind of updated a bit. Yeah, Willow, they've... I'll use the Cordelia line. She is no longer seeing the softer side of Sears. Oh, that's an episode one callback. 1996, baby. Woo! Episode one was years ago for us. Well, aired in 97, but filmed in 96, and there are banners saying that happened in 96, so yeah. 103 had the banners of 96. Anyway, um... <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't even have words for that. But, but but Willow is hip. Yes. She has fishnets in short jean shorts, as the kids do. Do they wear fishnets? Not. Well, in, Willow does. Not in rural central Maine, <laughs> but uh, in the rest of the world, I'm sure they do. I wore jeans. I wore jean shorts and tights a long time ago for a long time, so I'm sure that other people do too. But that progression doesn't seem to be there. It's very cold in Maine. Xander and Buffy seem to be about the same. Joyce is in there. She wasn't one of the uh, character designs that was released. She looks like she's lost about 10 years, looking like a hot mom. We noticed very different things in these issues, but... Tighter skin. Didn't notice that. Hot mom. Just noticed it was Joyce. <laughs> Kept moving on. But anyway... Character voices are uh, all very spot on for the ones that we've seen. They're fantastic. They really are. I, I even mean, the Buffy's fighting and she has a quip when she kills things. But even like the phrasing and like yeah, without feeling like it's the '90s, without doing the Valley Girl thing, it does feel very in character for everyone. Yeah, it it really does. They did a fantastic job with that. And Buffy already has the outsider feeling. Yes, they make that very explicit in a necessary way. She needs to feel like the outsider for this whole thing to work. We see some familiar sets from the show that are all spot on. Also, the characters look great. Well, I mean, we do see the library. The library is exact, except for the door. The door is different. And it also- has a doorknob. On the left. What kind of a monster has a doorknob on the left? There are two doors. The left one has the knob for the entrance. The hell is up with that? I don't know. Should be on the right. You enter on the right. Not the left. <laughs> He's British. <laughs> So Giles was responsible for the architecture, who looks like, identical, by the way, which I think is hilarious. Like, I find it very charming. Everyone else has like this updated look. Giles is still tweed. Right. What else would he be? I mean, later on, he was wearing leather jackets and getting murdery. Uh, but not at this point. He's still in tweed. Okay, cool. Tweed. <laughs> tweed three, is... Three piece the only, is the only way to go. Universal and stands the test of time. Speaking of the art, though, I do really like, especially the layouts, I think, are really awesome, which isn't... I don't mean to say that it's bad like character design or whatever i actually love the penciling the inking the coloring is great but i was really impressed with some of the layouts uh, there's one page where we kind of get a top down shot of buffy and then it becomes a pov shot the, the, it's just awesome the layouts are really solid they are and kind of some of the issues that we've had with the buffy stuff in high school vanishes because they decided to do a whole new reboot but because they decided to keep the characters as well it i don't know it's I can't tell what their age is supposed to be. There's a sign outside of Sunnydale that says, like, welcome freshmen. But does that mean they are freshmen? Because when we open up the show, they're in their sophomore year. So they might be a year younger than what we started with. I feel like they wouldn't put that banner up if they didn't... Intend for them to be freshmen. Intend for yeah, them to be freshmen. Not. But it doesn't really bother me however it shows up. Because especially, like, in the school that I work at right now, um, students tend to have been with each other for a very, very long time like since kindergarten. So it doesn't really matter. Whenever you have the new kid, it doesn't matter if it's freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, they're still the new kid. One thing that I thought was interesting is the cover, the main cover of this book, like tells you like up front, like this is Buffy for the new generation. It's Buffy with a stake and a smartphone, except within the issue itself, it could have been 1996. It really could have been. She works at a fast food restaurant. Not Double Meat Palace. Nope. The but, only difference, there's a computer that shows up. But, I mean, they had computers in the 90s, and what's done with the computer could have been done. They had a laptop that showed up. Okay, fine. But yes, what, what happened on the laptop could have easily happened, like, in a journal. Yeah. So, yes, nothing crazy happened, which I also think was very deliberate, because... Like, is it introducing older elements. Right. You don't want anybody to win. feel jarred by what happens i mean overall i thought it was a really strong introduction to a new world and i get that the last one had to wrap up because i think of this disney buying fox thing like all of fox's properties got snatched up I, i'm not quite sure how that works in comics versus i am like you know television and movies but i'm gonna say it's because of the disney fox merger unclear unclear it all happened at the same time. It doesn't mean that it necessarily is related, but you think about these things much more than I do. Yeah, I mean, as far as a new start goes, I think that it happened about as well as it could have. I've seen a lot of negativity on the internet about this reboot. And also, if you send me a negative tweet, side note, I'm never going to respond to it because I've thrown out some positive stuff and I've gotten some crap back at it. I'm just never going to respond to you. I liked this. Yeah, I think it's really solid. And while I didn't have the negativity that some people had, I was definitely a little hesitant going in. But you know what? Really pleasantly surprised. It's really solid. And for every reviewer that says, Buffy slays, I hate you. I think the cat is going to attack the dog. Yeah, probably. looks that way. I hope he doesn't knock over the TV. But seriously, don't use puns in your reviews. You really enjoy puns in real life, though. Yeah, but I'm not... Uh, whatever. You know what I mean. You enjoy a good verbal pun. Writing it down makes it seem a little more... <laughs> contrived. Contrived, yes. I like somehow. it on the spot. I like to throw my dad jokes at you <laughs> off the top of my noggin. Yep. I don't know. That'll probably do it for non-spoilers. 
All right, spoilers. Spoilers away. Um, I want to start off with a concern. This 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 isn't a negative by any stretch of the imagination. It just kind of got an eyebrow raise out of me. Xander. What about Xander? Xander throughout the entire series is the everyman, and it looks like the updated everyman is going to be dealing with depression in some mental health stuff. It's not explicitly stated, but it is certainly hinted at. Well, I think that's a fine thing to do. The only thing that gets kind of the eyebrow raise out of me is that the actor who played him has very publicly had issues with depression. So it kind of feels more hot button than it might otherwise. I'll be interested to see where that goes because that's it's not a bad thing. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I just think it needs to be a thing that is dealt with with potentially more care than you might need to otherwise. And so far it has been only the, hinted I mean, at. Yeah. Nothing has been dealt with in any way, but it's certainly not been insensitive how anything has been. Handled. No, it just it just got an eyebrow raise of like, oh, this has to be careful. Yes. Willow starts off as already being a lesbian as opposed to in the show itself she is i liked that i liked that too that she is i also think that would be a hard sell if you had like her coming to terms with her sexuality a second time i think people would have oh yeah totally been thrilled and that felt very normal as well like they just threw it in there yeah it's just in a very buffy says something to willow you about know, willow's talking about something and who's and... her girlfriend I don't know. Is it Cordy? I don't know. I kind of wanted it to be Cordy. I have no idea. I didn't even think about so it. So issue two, because Cordelia is going to be in this. I think she's going to be in the next issue. I want to be Cordelia. Also, I think Xander's a werewolf because there was an issue four cover that showed him in a sheepskin jacket. Wolf and sheep's clothing kind of deal. Oz already did it. Yes. You already read that past me. I also put it on Twitter twice. So you were very <laughs> into this. You put a lot of stake I've into now, that. I've put it out three times publicly. My opinion of Xander is a werewolf. And I think Willow was dating Cordelia. Um, I would be totally in for the Willow dating Cordelia thing. I thought that felt very normal, very natural. They do a really good job of throwing in a fair amount of exposition because obviously you have to in the first issue. It's, Mostly. 99%. That's what I mean. There, um, there was one line where uh, the exposition was a little heavy handed. And I've... I always throw this example to you. It's like, if you have two people like, how long have we been brothers? And there was one of that with like Xander and Will. Like, have you always been this annoying since we were kids? It's like, I never talked to you like, Emily, how long have we been buried? I mean, I say that sometimes, but it's because I don't remember, not because I'm trying to use it to make a point. Right, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, I've definitely heard that question before, but in less of that tone. How long? Forever? <laughs> Has it been a million years? But yeah, the exposition works overall really well. I like that Buffy and Giles are already established. We don't need to be worrying about recreating scenes that were done the first time around. Right. The only thing that stuck out to me was Willow gets very into the idea of what do witches look like and who are witches? And and have have you ever met a witch? Yeah, that was three times in two panels. And And then witches was brought up earlier. Yeah, I get it. Willow was a witch. I remember. There were a couple of references to weed and stuff, the whole like grr arg of mutant enemy and Anya was watching Firefly. Not too much, but I, you know, preferably don't lean too heavily into that. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like the third reference that made it feel like, okay, we got the point. It's Willow and witches. (laughs) Yeah. Because yes, if somebody brought up that vampires are real. three times in two panels. She's like, I'd really like to meet a witch. I bet they can be really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, we get it, it. And then that's what Buffy was like, don't you have a girlfriend? Which was a really really lovely way to slip that in actually like that worked out really well that was my issue with the other bit of exposition though is willow goes like have you always been this annoying since we were kids you know our long-standing relationship but then when she's talking to buffy she's like oh me and xander we've been friends since we were kids that is a natural way to work that exposition in so we have the same information given to us twice one naturally and one not so much Right. And because Buffy's new, you can get away with a lot of that exposition without it feeling so much like exposition. And even the Buffy thing, like that felt like a very normal question to ask, to ask, like, don't you have a girlfriend? And I really enjoyed that. So good job on that exposition. I love Anya in this. And also we didn't harp on it. Yeah, no. Yeah, I love it. There's not the head turn of like, what? A lesbian? No. I I don't even know if Willow answers her. I don't even... no, no, she does. She says, like, whatever, a girl can have fantasies or oh, yeah, that's what it was. Lines. But it was not even like a yes or a no, like a how did you know that? It was like a this is so not information that I'm a teenager, whatever. So, Anya is my favorite in this. Anya, once again, an entrepreneur, runs her own business. So, good for her, not She's easy. An antiques lady, <laughs> she's selling ma- oh no, yard sale lady. That's what they call her. <laughs> she's selling guns and magical equipment and other things on the black market. Makes sense. The only thing that doesn't make sense about it is to get into Anya's secret hidden, we'll just call it magic box for now. Yes. Is that there's a sign that says no teenagers and you have to press the sign that says no teenagers. As once being a teenager myself, I'd have stole that immediately. 
hoodlum. Fair. I would not have, obviously. But I love that Anya is going back to that moral gray area that we saw her very early in season three. And I think that's a more interesting aspect of that character. Once Anya stops being kind of morally gray, she gets kind of boring. Once she's just the girlfriend. I like having her be her own thing. I always liked Anya. She's kind of feisty. I mean, so do I. But her role was the girlfriend. And then once the wedding didn't happen, it was... The ex. I guess you're under contract. You say that like they didn't write it that way. Hey, I think the wedding should have gone through. Anyway. So she's kind of morally ambiguous, and she's also shipping stuff off from her magic store, or magic box, if you will, to Wolfram and Hart. I love that. Love it so much. Yeah, and also, like, that was definitely a, hey, guys, Wolfram and Hart still exists thing, but but it makes sense for her to have a connection with, with Wolfram and Hart if she is dealing with well, just legal it. magic things. Also, she kills some guy, like, immediately. Yeah, vampires Fantastic. get some kind of jewelry that make them immortal. So probably the gem of Amara, but there's a whole set of it. So the set of Amara. If you don't remember, it was in Buffy 403, Angel 103, ring that could make vampires impossible to kill. And then Angel broke it because he's a masochist and an idiot. Short answer. Why break? He's like, well, if I go out in the sunlight, then no one will be there to protect them in the dark. So make a point of that, but maybe hang on to the thing that makes you unkillable. Idiot. Anyway, Anya has these and... She lets a vampire try it out. The vampire's like, I want to buy all of them. And then Anya kills him. Yeah. And then sells them theoretically to Wolfram and Hart or keeps them. Well, we don't know where that. No, I think she just puts them back. We don't know what Wolfram and Hart is getting. But. But I did like that inclusion. And I also like that she is very much still the villain in this world. Like. She was originally. Yeah. I don't think she's even a villain. I think she's just ambiguous. She's just out to make a buck. Yeah. I appreciate that about her. Yeah. As an ambiguous buck getter myself. Okay, so we like the characters. We like the characters' voices. We like the characters' design. We like the general layout of the story. We like what we're setting up. We like Anya. We like. I mean, I like all the the world. Anya Anya just stood out to me. And you have one gripe. You have one. It's not even that big of a gripe. You have one more significant gripe than the others. At the end of the issue, Drusilla goes to shop at Anya's store. Drew's your favorite. I love Drew. But it's a full page reveal. And while I'm excited that Drusilla's in the book, it doesn't really work as a reveal on th- three different kind of fronts. Because you're going to have three different groups of people reading this. People trying it out for the first time. Because like, oh, it's new. I'll try reading this. Full page reveal of Drew means nothing. People who are fans of the show, not necessarily keeping up with everything that's happened. Maybe they read some comics before. They read a new thing. And it's Drusilla. Except it doesn't look like Drusilla because she's wearing totally new clothes. It doesn't sound and like she Drusilla. Has face. Yeah, but I mean, her voice and appearance are different. So the people who might know Drusilla aren't going to recognize it as Drusilla. So it doesn't work as a reveal. Granted, she says a greeting. So, and by her voice not being, it's not that she wouldn't say She's that. She's not it's crazy. Just, yeah, it's not apparently something totally weird and off the wall that you're like, oh, that's definitely Drusilla. Or your third group of people are the people who have paid attention to the character designs that were released by Boom. And also they know that the issue to cover has Drusilla on it. So they already knew Drew was coming and it doesn't work as a reveal because he kind of already knew it was happening. So kind of on three fronts, it doesn't work as a reveal. Although I do love that Drew is there and that it's going to be a different kind of Drusilla from the looks of it. This is hard because you read this first and you told me. I read this like a month ago. And you were like, Drew's there, but she doesn't necessarily look like the Drew that you know. So when I got there, I was like, oh, that's definitely Drew because I can see it once I know it's supposed to be Drew. So I'm kind of tainted in that aspect. But without context, I mean, this has happened before. When Angel After the Fall, their first issue came out, their big reveal at the end of it is Gunn is dead and he's a vampire. But because the coloring was weird, I didn't even realize it. Honestly. And then it like took my second read through. I was like, oh, that's Gunn. I forgot that Anya was in this. It, you told me all of this, but I forgot it was Anya until all of a sudden we got to Drew saying, hello, Anya. Well, and she, then I was like, she also goes like, it's oh. Anya time or <laughs> whatever it was. TV. It was at the very end, though, of the whole Anya situation. Like Anya's already killed a vampire. Like she's gone through the whole thing. And now she's like, oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Anya. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were in this. I mean, it was I thought it was interesting before I knew it was Anya. Once I knew it was Anya, it's even better. So don't be like me. No, I, I'm not trying to rag on like nitpicky stuff because overall overall we really liked it yeah the the small things are small things it's really solid so and i think i do really think it's a good start to to go with familiar elements before introducing other things like we know robin wood is going to be different but we also know other familiar characters are coming we know that spike is coming we know cordelia is coming and no i have no idea what's happening with angel but we really like it and we think that you should read it we think that you should go to your local comic store and get a copy yeah because I mean, it's awesome and pe- also put it in your poll list i know for people who are like oh boom ruined the dark horse stuff i, I don't think it was their choice <laughs> i think that fox got bought up by disney yelled a mouse or bob Iger. 
And you know what? I really think that Boom did their best to respect the... This is solid. It's yeah, really solid. To respect the integrity of the property and say, you know what? We don't want to take what you guys have done and try to ruin that. Because the way that Dark Horse ended it, it was... <clears throat> they ended it. it they yeah. didn't... Well, there's also a difference because Boom has also picked up Firefly, but they're not starting fresh. Right. They're trying to find room for Firefly, but with Buffy, they're it's clean slate. Because, and I think that's because an easier Buffy, way to tell a story. Because Buffy ended. And Buffy also went on for 20-something years. It would feel super awkward to try and pick up after that ending. They ended. And they ended the right way. And they ended how they should have ended. But also, boom, it maybe continued the Serenity story that was not ended. Okay, but we're talking about Buffy right I'm now. I'm just throwing things out there. I understand, but I doubt that anybody from Boom is listening. But if you are, feel free to call us. As I mean you. <laughs> I don't have any social media. You do, but I you never use it. I don't have any public social media. No, you have a Twitter. You just never, you haven't used it in like in two years. I have it so that I could watch NFL games two years ago. That no longer count because they don't do that anymore. Woohoo. <laughs> anyway. Oh, also Buffy's like, I want to be a normal teenager. So she goes to hang out with Willow and Xander and they're watching Nosferatu. As a teenager that liked watching Nosferatu, those kids don't exist. Well, you made me watch that. You weren't a teenager. You were in your late twenties, and I fell asleep. Did you know? I don't know. I fell asleep through most of those. He dies. Doesn't shocking. <laughs> Max Shrek playing Orlock or Dracula, if you will. It was the first official Dracula movie, or not official, because uh, Bram Stoker's widow wouldn't sell the rights, so they said, "Now nah, we're just gonna do our own thing." It's Dracula, but we just call him Orlock. Good flick. Every Halloween we watch movies, and I sometimes make it through some of them. I think that one must be in public domain. I think that's why they could get away with that, because that wasn't like an homage. That, they were just watching Nosferatu. Probably. I don't know. It's a good film, kids. You should watch it. But maybe not when you're in high school, because no one else wants to do it. That makes sense, because they're in high school. <sighs> I did. That makes sense. <laughs> I know I'm bitter about this comic. I'm like, those kids aren't real. Eh. Or rather, you would have been friends with those kids, and you're just bitter that they didn't go they to They don't your, exist in groups. They didn't go to your small, southern central Maine high school. Damn it. You probably could have found kids in college who would have done that. Oh, in college, yeah. Well, they were the same kids in high school. They just lived in New Jersey. Jersey represent. That's not an appropriate time to use that. <laughs> it's always an appropriate time for that. Anyway. Let's some pork roll. We don't have any. It's a blizzard, so... <sighs> That's a solid no. I think I'll get some pork roll. I'm going to make you some chicken chili. I knew it outside of Jersey. It's like, the hell is that? I also wondered something similar. And then I looked it up on Wikipedia and it said that it is both crunchy and mushy. You guys like bacon? Pork roll's better. Crunchy and mushy. That's all I leave you with. <laughs> crunchy and mushy. Hard to find outside of Jersey. It is the saltiest it. product I've ever eaten in my oh, life. So good. <laughs> So good. I love pork roll. And I love Buffy. What a good comic. What a good issue one. This is actually a great issue, and we highly recommend that you guys watch it. Salt. Read read it. it. (laughs) Solid stuff from the top down, writing, coloring, the art. Everything looks great. It's a really solid issue. Highly recommended. And we're going to keep going with these issue by issue reviews, uh, non-spoiler and spoiler. If you want to get them, we're going to have them exclusively on our Patreon, patreon.com slash editors note comics. We also will- One dollar a month. Yep, they will be doing a full arc review when it's all done for the uh, public, but also Patreon will get that a week early. And if you want to find stuff, like it's all at editorsnotecomics.com. I mean, the other stuff's all there. I guess rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Also, if you're ever in Maine, come hang out with us. We're in central Maine. You're making a lot of faces because the dog is licking you. He's really in my way. (laughs) He's really making this difficult and he screwed up my glasses. But that'll do it for now. We'll be back for Firefly and more Buffy and... I don't know, maybe an interview or two. We'll see. I need to reach out. So we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Have a good winter snowstorm. Go buy Buffy issue one. If you listen to this far, you probably did. Bye. Go buy a second one. Bye.